What's up guys, my name is Carl and welcome to Tech Canter. Today is the day I'm offering up something which has cost me a fair bit of money to invest into. I've built a PC with my own money purely for the sake of this video. So as a new channel, if you can appreciate that, feel free to click that like button to show your support. Moving on to the main reason you're watching this video is because of that title and that thumbnail. This PC I built for 250 pounds, 270 including some unnecessary extras that I wanted to add, has got some seriously impressive specs. So what trickery is involved to get this kind of stuff for this kind of price? The answer is none. All you need to do is have access to the internet and some kind of secondhand market. eBay, Facebook, Craigslist for the Americans and CEX are all great choices. All of the components I have picked up are secondhand and I purchased them all individually. You could probably shave some money off of this price if you're willing to pick up some bundled hardware like motherboards, RAM and processors all together or by using a less efficient and less trusted power supply. So what have I managed to get for my money? Our CPU is the Intel Core i7-860 with 4 cores and 8 threads. Clocked at 2.8 GHz, this CPU is also overclockable as long as you've got a sufficient motherboard. This is one of the first gen i7 CPUs that Intel released I mean it's just about 8 years old this month, but as far as day to day use goes, it's very very capable. Our motherboard is the P7H55D-M Pro, this motherboard I picked up is capable of overclocking, has plenty of IO and supports faster and more affordable DDR3 RAM. Plenty of SATA ports for storage, expansion and decent onboard audio and video outputs on the rear. The RAM I've got installed is a pair of cheap 4 gig. 1333 MHz DDR3 sticks, which is decent enough to keep our PCs ticking along nicely. I recommend grabbing another 2 gig, two 4 gig sticks later down the line when you feel like you need it. Though 8 gig is great for now. For our power supply, we have a semi modular CX500M from Corsair. It's 80 plus bronze, has nice flat black cables that make cable routing less of a chore in our case. This is perhaps more on the expensive side for a 500 watt power supply but I feel it's a nice addition to have to the system. The case? Nothing special. It's cheap and flimsy, has a big side panel, some decent front IO and support for multiple drives. I had a red LED fan, but it didn't match the blue power button which was always on at the front, so I swapped it out for two blue LED fans. As far as drives go, I've got a Samsung 830 128 gig SSD in there. It's something I just had lying around, but I've included a random 120 gig SSD in the price of the build, that will offer similar or even better performance than mine. Though it is small, we can still get a few games on this SSD, but I definitely recommend pick up an a, say a 1TB hard drive for more storage down the line. Finally, the last piece of the puzzle is the graphics card. It's a Radeon 7870 from XFX and offers some really impressive performance for how much it costs. In my last video, I threw this graphics card into my main system with an overclocked i7-6700K and got some great results in demanding titles. So if you're interested in seeing the most of what you can get out of this card, feel free to click the link in the corner and check out that video. That way you can compare the results and see how much of a bottleneck an eight year old i7 is compared to a two year old i7. Though don't forget the price difference between this i7 and my one. So how much do these each cost? The CPU cost £37.50. The motherboard cost £50. The RAM cost £22.50. The PSU cost £35, the case cost £21, the SSD I mentioned is available for around £40 and the GPU also cost £40. So all of that bring in a grand total of £246 including postage. As I mentioned earlier my case has two blue LED fans as opposed to one red one. I spent an extra £16.20 on the two blue fans and a cable needed to power them in this system. These are totally optional but I felt that they look better than what's included so I've not included them in the price. As far as cheap upgrades go that I'd recommend, I'd look at adding a one terabyte hard drive for about 40 pounds or 28 pounds used, another eight gig of RAM for another 22 pound 50. And I'd also look at about adding a better CPU cooler, which would really help the overclocking of the system and keep it cooler under load and quieter. Anything from Cooler Master around the 30 pound price would be a major improvement like the Hyper 212 Evo or LED or whatever one you feel but this would push your budget over £300, so these can easily be added later, which is why I've not bothered with them. Now it's time to benchmark this system and see just how well it's performing. When it comes to our SSD, the best way to find out just how well it's running or how quickly it's running 
we need to benchmark it. And Crystal Disk Mark is one of the easiest and most trusted applications. As you can see from the results, our SSD is being seriously held back as a result of our outdated motherboard, only offering SATA 2, and leaving us with near enough exactly half the performance we would expect from this SSD on a newer SATA 3 platform. One thing to remember though, these speeds are still much, much faster than what a traditional mechanical hard drive could offer us, as well as giving us much faster boot up and shutdown times and loading times for all of our daily tasks. In Cinebench, our i7-860 showed its age a bit, offering a result of just 460, a massive difference between my more current, though still last gen, overclocked 6700K, giving me a result of 1018. Obviously, that's not a fair comparison. One is much newer as well as being overclocked. Geekbench threw up a similar result with our processor struggling with the benchmark. It offered a poultry score of 2655 on the single core speeds and 8422 on the multi-core side. The latter of which I was expecting a slightly better result if I'm honest. Like I just mentioned before overclocking this CPU, that will affect our gaming results. But I'll compare that later on in the video so you can see the difference between overclocking and non-overclocking. So let's have a look at these games and see what kind of average FPS we're getting from these different titles. So after fiddling around in the BIOS, I managed to get a stable overclock on this i7 to 3.5 GHz. A lot of people online have reported higher overclocks at up to 4 GHz, likely achieved with much better coolers than the one I've got installed on mine. Bearing that in mind, I'll show you some quick charts comparing the system's benchmarks results before and after the overclock. So as you can all see, overclocking brings in some decent results. It gives us some big gains in games like Rocket League, CSGO and Overwatch. But Fallout 4 and Tomb Raider, not so much. One thing it does do though, is increase those 1% and 0.1% lows, meaning the game runs smoother and stutters a lot less. That's something we saw across the board with all the games that we tested, so definitely worth doing. Cinebench also saw a decent increase from 460 to a score up to 550. Geekbench had a similar improvement for going from 2655 to 2892 on a single core and 8422 to 9725. 9725 on the multi-core side of things. One thing I will say though is that the system can get really hot with this basic 10 pound cooler, I think it's from Amazon, so keep an eye on your temperatures or pick up a better cooler. To conclude, this is a fairly loud, fairly hot system. It's also very powerful and offers some great performance at gaming at this price point. Not only will this system perform well in games, it's great for day-to-day -day use as well as that having that i7 with hyperthready makes this PC great for video editing. So if you're looking at starting a YouTube channel, this PC could be a better starting point than a new PC with a cheap i3 or Pentium inside. This system can easily be made cooler and quieter with some fairly easy upgrades in the future, and can also easily be made faster with the two extra sticks of RAM I mentioned and a bigger overclock. Right guys, that is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. What do you think? Is this fairly decent rig for the price they paid? What else would you guys build for a similar budget? Leave your comments down below. As always, if you like this kind of stuff, feel free to click that like button. And if you didn't, click the dislike button. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you thought about today's video and how we could maybe improve going ahead in the future. And if you decide my face hasn't offended you, don't forget to click the subscribe button so we can see each other again soon. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.